I, I really believe that the overwhelming majority of the American people cherish Israel uh, and, and uh, now more than ever uh, support the security and well-being of the people of Israel. And I will tell you, I was yesterday I was at the northern border. Mm. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because uh, you are the highest ranking uh, Republican that's come so far uh, and the highest uh, or the most maybe most prominent evangelical who's come. And I'm so grateful. But you did Thank something you. that the, our other delegations haven't quite done yet, which was because it's a long trip and there's it's a very complicated and it's a very hot war zone, hotter actually right now than the Gaza border with Israel. So tell us a little bit about, yeah, your, your time in the North. I thought it was important to go North. Yeah. We, uh, you know, the United States, the people of our country and our leadership need to send an unambiguous message and that we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel in their fight against Hamas until uh, they hunt down and destroy every vestige of Hamas. Mm -hmm. But we also need to send a message to the North, to Hezbollah, and ultimately to their handlers in Tehran. Yeah. Uh, that we are going to stand with Israel against any acts of aggression by any actors in this region. And I thought it was important to go north. There's been, there's been loss of life. Uh, wow. uh, Israel's been taking steps with, uh, largely with artillery, artillery and aerial uh, combat to push back. But uh, the, the reality is that uh, the, the response of Israeli defense forces on October the 7th, which I learned about yesterday, 90% of those IDF forces are reservists, yeah. which means they're men and women that have jobs and lives and families. But on October 7th, more than 40,000 soldiers left their hearth and home and deployed to the northern border within 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Many of them didn't even have orders to go, but they went because they knew that was their duty station and they understood the threat. And I, I, I believe in my heart, they their presence there with that level of speed and professionalism may well have on that day prevented a widening of this conflict. I think so, but I, I, I think many of us are concerned that we're going wider uh, in, 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 once we sort of mop up in, in, uh, in Gaza, that we're gonna go much bigger in, um, in Lebanon because UN Security Council Resolution 1701 says no Hezbollah forces are supposed to be south of the Latani right. River. That's almost 20 miles from our border, but they're right there ready to invade um, I don't see how this war doesn't widen. Uh, do you have hope that it, uh, there's some diplomatic solution to the Hezbollah fight? Well, I, I really do believe that peace comes through strength. Mm. And yeah, you've been I know, consistent about that. I know Israel will stay strong. Mm -hmm. I know Israel will continue to do what needs to be done to hunt down and destroy Hamas once and for all. But I'm gonna continue to be a voice that the leadership of our country and those who would aspire to leadership of our country mm -hmm. send the same unambiguous, unconditional message that we will stand with Israel in her fight to the South. We will stand with Israel as she does what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I hope, I hope what, uh, what the issues on the Northern border can be resolved diplomatically through the UN Security Council resolution. But if not, if Israel decides to take action to push Hezbollah back, the United States needs to make it clear that we'll stand with them. And ultimately, whether it's whether it's the Houthis in the Red Sea, Hamas or Hezbollah, we, we all know where the leash leads. Mm -hmm. It all leads back to Iran. Yes. And uh, I really believe that the presence of two American battle groups here in the region, at least until recently, um, and, um, uh, and the consistent support of the United States actually will lead us to this not widening. There are many people that believe that, that a strong American response in the region could widen the war. I believe the opposite. Uh, I truly do believe that if we stand firm as Israel stands firm, that that will be the quickest pathway toward security and restoring peace in the region. We gotta, go, we gotta wrap up, but I have to ask you based on what you just said, President Biden and the Senate have it, we're three months in, uh, Speaker, wonderful evangelical Republican Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson passed a $14.5 billion aid package for Israel. It hasn't gotten moved. Can you just comment that before we wrap up? Well, I, I, I think it's absolutely essential that America play our role as leader of the free world, whether it's here in Israel, whether it's in Eastern Europe, where war continues to rage in Ukraine, we, we need to see leadership 
out of this administration. And the and we also need a secure border of the United States. Well, we didn't have time to get into that because what happened but it's, in it, Gaza and Israel? But, right. I but wrote it, a whole novel about that and happening in America. President Joe Biden, I believe, uh, in the early going here, they, he sent a very clear and unambiguous message of support to Israel. And I welcome that. Yeah. I'm grateful for it. But I must tell you, I'm, I'm concerned the Biden administration is starting to send signals about Israel needing to draw down combat operations in Gaza, uh, short of a uh, of full on elimination of Hamas. I'm concerned about talks of, of uh, pushing for a ceasefire again. Um, and and I'm, I'm also concerned the Biden administration continues to refuse to take the steps to secure our southern border that would make it possible for those aid packages to move forward. This is a moment where uh, I want the people of Israel to know the vast majority of the American people stand with you. But I also want the Biden administration to know the American people expect you to stand with our most cherished ally, Israel, be the leader of the free world to secure the southern border of the United States. That's the kind of presidential leadership the American people want. Uh, and I expect uh, I expect soon we will have again in the United States. <laughs>